I don't think it's dead. I think it might come back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and there's the geese. These beds are not made up of potting soil. They are made up of wood underneath a small layer of rabbit manure and then potting soil. So most of this is not potting soil and it didn't cost us anything. Always, always, always cover these. You have small animals or small children that can get in these and they drown. We know from personal experience, we've had all sorts of animals that if we were careless about this, have drowned in the tub. Whether it's a little starling or anything, you don't want that to happen. Yep. Okay, so either tot soy or bok choy. I don't, I'm not sure which. Very healthy, very happy. Okay. Okay, it's over. Quick, quick. As you can see, the garden in the greenhouse was really abundant. We had peas and Asian greens and regular greens and all sorts of stuff. Kaya was the one who had planted it and she kept it watered, she kept it maintained, but it was her first garden. So, the limit of what she could really do was to water it. And this garden was in the furthest part of our property as far as gardens go, which means that it went to seed because I didn't get it harvested. I had so many other gardens that were closer to the house that were so abundant that we pulled all of our table food and the rabbit food from those gardens instead of from the greenhouse. So in the end, what we really like to use this garden for is for winter gardens. We like to use it for winter gardens because we can bring the rabbits in, put them on their cages on top of the hotbed, and we can allow the ducks to wander around the bottom of the greenhouse and it keeps their feet from freezing, it keeps them happy in the winter. That's just from a cat, that little hole. At this point, I could keep using it just for the ducks, but um, the odds are pretty high that sometime in the middle of winter when the snow was getting really bad, this whole thing would come down. If I take it down now, then the other parts of the plastic I can use for other things, but I do need to get the main skin redone. And so we need to take this hot bit apart put it back together again um, with plastic or tin on the inside so that the growing medium can't fall through. Just a lot of cleanup. And it would be much easier to clean up if the plastic was down. This wire, this wire is called wiggle wire. For obvious reasons you have to wiggle it to get it into place, but it locks things in without leaving tears in your plastic. It works really well. Okay, so we put the sideways, the sideways plastic on with one 
with one layer of wiggle wire. And then when we put on this one, it goes on last, and it's a double layer of wiggle wire. So that's the order of operation we need to go when we put it back together. So tell us how cold it's been. Like two above. Yeah. And what have we been doing in the greenhouse? We've been making a very large hot bed. Can you get your hair out of your face just because I'm a mom? It's driving me crazy. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go out and take the crowbar out. This is our 20 pile, 20 pallet high pile. We have to get a ladder because our friend that sells these brought them and then stacked them all way high. So now we're trying to find Paige so she can come help us with this. Um, we need to take them down. We're gonna take a crowbar to the pallet uh, garden bed that's in the greenhouse currently because all the connectors are on the inside. It's super old. We have to get it down in order to get the rest of it built. The nice thing is, is that with the big cold snap, we don't have any spiders or anything like that in the hotbed to crawl up our legs anymore. Yeah. All right. All right, so all of my connectors are on the outside this year because I have hotbeds I'd love to be able to take apart, but all their connectors are on the inside. And so I can't get to them. I'm gonna have to empty them instead of being able to just take them apart. That one, it has connectors on the outside, but most of them are on the inside. So I have to empty it before I can um, take it apart. All right, so we're here in the greenhouse. I'm, I'm inside the new bed. Here's the old bed. And what we're doing is we're building the new bed so that we can take everything out of the old bed and just put it in here. And then we're going to change the plastic. But it's cold enough that I don't want to change the plastic until I have to because it keeps us warm. sure if you guys will be able to see this but this is what the um, broken down wood and cardboard and everything looks like on the inside that's what that's what it turns into this one had too much ventilation so the outside of it and the top of it did not turn into that as well but the bottom two feet three feet the bottom three feet is all like this um, over time it does break down. It breaks down a lot better if it has less air circulating through it. Alright, so we've pulled quite a bit out. We've, we pulled some of our old rabbit hutches apart so we had more tin. We pulled out the shallow beds. And we pulled off the front side of the greenhouse because I was trying to remember how the wiggle wire went. All right, so Kai's finishing up the outside. We have everything lined on the inside. The pallets rot if you have them wet enough and they don't have this guard on the inside. Something to just hold the soil in because as it breaks down, it does turn into dirt. There's a little bit of wood left, but not very much. Most of it's just turned into good compost. So it's really important. This is more of it. It's really important to have the inside lined. Otherwise it falls through and it gets too aerated and it, it breathes too much. It's it dustier and dustier. I've opened the other side, I've opened this side, and there's just too much dust. And I also feel like I'm just kind of putting it off because um, I'm worried things aren't going to turn out right, but until I actually do it, I need, I need to just do it. The plastic is bad. We need to put new plastic on. I keep thinking I want to keep the plastic on so we have something to work in. Hi, Mama. Huh. Um,
Um, until I take it off, we can't really move on. Okay. Where are we starting? We are going to start. Um, How about where the wind tore it? No, we're going to take it off in one piece so we can reuse the plastic as best we can. Try to keep it in one piece. I don't want it jaggedy. It's harder to use, okay? So to remind you guys, These that's so the dull. hole. That's the hole. That's why we need to take it down. And this plastic is six years old and the warranty is four years. to get this dismantled get that finished built and filled and and we need to clear off the bottom of the greenhouse and get it all prepped to put the new plastic on we left the wiggle wire in place at the bottom and just cut the plastic and that way we knew that the right lengths were with everything we didn't take this side down we did take that side down we're going to reuse those plastics uh, they're cut right to shape and they're reinforced with um, string. Remember, be gentle with it. If you're not gentle with it, it bends it out of shape and then we can't use it. I really like to have enough supplies on hand for the next growing season. I don't like to be caught flat-footed wondering what the prices are going to be. And so I have all of our peat moss for next year. And then last winter, I bought plastic for the greenhouse, which is the big white bundle plastic for the greenhouse and then plastic for a pallet greenhouse again because i didn't know what supplies were going to be available just as we went into covid i just topped everything off what do you think kaya about what <laughs> anything is this exhausting I'm just ready to be done. We do love wiggle wire though. Wiggle wire is pretty fun. I just want staplers. You think staplers are more fun? Mm, they are quicker. I'm not sure what the kitty thinks of this one. They, uh, no. I think my fingers are numb from pulling plastic. Okay, make sure that it stays super flat. This was, uh, I'm impressed with the plastic. I don't know if it's going to be as tough as the last one was. I hope it will be. The last one lasted six years. Even with a hole in it from the ducks landing on it. It lasted two years after the first hole was sprung. So this plastic was $150 to cover and then have lots of extra, which is a really good price. We'll see if it matches up. This is the label. Well, we're done. What? What? We're done. As soon as Kai finishes her last bit, we're done. I need to cut that a little more. That would be a good idea. Hey guys, so this is the greenhouse. This is the hotbed. You have to put a lot of carbon in in order to have there be no smell. So we're putting cardboard and branches and any other cardboard, sorry, any other carbon and uh, eventually we'll use sawdust but sawdust costs us money and can be used for other things so that's the last thing we put on 
we'll be using bedding from the goats, which would be grass, hay, alfalfa stems, anything that comes from them um, that's in a place that it won't turn into soil for us for the garden, it comes in here. And um, it's really important if you're going to keep rabbits in a greenhouse that you have really good venting. That is a door that is opened on bright days because on bright days it'll be 120 degrees in here in the middle of winter. <laughs> so that's our venting. We do have a fan that we could run as well, but I don't like to use electricity unless I have to. So this is what it looks like before we put them on. These are the supports that the cages rest on. Okay. Okay, mama goes in a separate cage from the babies. Do you need me to hold it open for you? Well, that baby was in there the go. cage with her. Gentle, gentle, ah. gentle, gentle. Okay. Those, those edges can hurt her. Do it up. Do it up tight. I was trying to get her in without... Okay, the bunnies are going to be in here for just a second while we're getting their permanent cages into the greenhouse. I don't want them to feel stressed by moving them with the cage. Only holding it with my Okay, when you go in, I need you to be calm and not in a hurry. Just slow down a little bit. Are we taking it in? You are. Hold it high so it's not catching on the blue, but not so high that it's catching the greenhouse. All right, that's what it looks like. I'm probably going to bring some dark plastic out here so that they feel like they have a little bit more shade because on bright days they are going to feel like they are really exposed and rabbits don't like to be out in really bright sunlight. So we've got a little bit of a mutiny going on here at the homestead. <laughs> Kai wants the pig butchered and she wants all the rabbits in one spot, but she doesn't like that we're having to put together a greenhouse and arrange all of our butchering supplies in order to do it. So you're going to see bouncing back and forth a lot between videos as far as topic, because every day we're going out and doing a little bit more to move everything forward before um, weather changes. This is what we look like going out to do chores. I have the frozen pulp from my mom's juicing in the feed bucket. I don't leave the feed out there because we have mice in the greenhouse and they get in it and then they poop in it and then they're spreading a disease. So in case you're wondering why we went with such a large greenhouse, it's because not I just really wanted to experiment to see if I could create an ecosystem. <laughs> and spread them. He said 40 to 50 percent. Um. Come crumple it up over the top. Okay. 
So, can you guys see all my little sprouts? See, this bed is very warm right above. So I'm going to move the tray, watch for the steam. And you can see I have the other hotbed all built up and ready to go. I have a lot of wood in there, so we're trying wood chips, hookah culture, and rabbit manure. I don't know how that's going to go. You can see that the frost on this side is starting to melt. The frost on this side is still quite solid. This one, I watered it down the other day, and oh my gosh, all the mushrooms came out to play. Um, I did have my tray of tomatoes out here and they were doing just fine because of the bottom heat from the bed and then I put a blanket over the top but the mice came up in the night and ate the seeds from the tomatoes and my basil. I had basil and peppers and tomatoes in here in a flat and they were just fine but the mice came up and got it and so you can see where the where the central heat is from the manure and the wood chips and it, it's really really warm and that's I haven't watered it for a couple days but it's really really warm in there so I think I preferred this method the wood chips and the rabbit manure to the straw bales the straw bales was just a lot easier to set up it was just so fast and so quick I'm going to plant it deeply. So it's the second week in April and this is what I have from the hotbed. And I don't think I would have had as good a result if I had done it just in the greenhouse and not in the hotbed. And I have done this before in a cold frame and had um, results this early. So the, if you don't have a greenhouse, Use a cold frame, use a hot bed, use a cold frame on a hot bed, that kind of thing. It's all possible even in the zone four where we still have nights that are down in the 20s. It, they need bottom heat as, and just protection. Hi, honey. And so um, this is my third picking just from that small bed. And we have a lot more in there. The radishes look really good. The onions are thinking about it on this side. Over here, the onions are just fine. And then I have the bulb onions in the cold frame in the backyard. It's really, really nice in here right now. The peas are starting to come on. The bok choy and the tot soy are doing really well. These radishes are not doing as well. I think they're just a little too crowded. I find what I have found what I find interesting is that the line, like the, the row system, doesn't really seem to work very well. Um, I'm going to give that to them so they can eat some dirt and eat some greens. Um, because it doesn't, it doesn't matter how thinly I put them in, it always comes out too much. Whereas when I broadcast them like this, I get a really good mix. There's enough room for everything. I can come in and pull out my radishes without disturbing my carrots and then I also have these look like kohlrabi that's what those look like we've had some really good radishes out of here even though it's so hot in here these are my this is my active hotbed the one that is still hot and I planted them I know these are squash, but you can see the tomato inside too. Up there. So those are for my active hotbed. And these down here were planted at the same time. Not in the active hotbed. These were planted later. This hotbed is slightly warm. The other difference is, so that tomato looks pretty good. And this tomato looks pretty good, but it doesn't look as good as the one that's inside the wall of water, too. 
again, all planted at the same time. The goats are the most helpful part. They are eternally helpful as they eat our new bushes. Do you need to go out in the back pasture, little one? <laughs> huh? Lots and lots of Swiss chard. And I need to go out and do it again because it's getting thick enough that the smaller ones that are still coming up aren't having enough sunlight. And we've had nights below freezing for the last three weeks. Is more Swiss chard. And in here I have kale and spinach.